Rise up and pray. I am your host, Sister Vicky. I want to certainly welcome you to the Watch Out Podcast. I do believe that late in the midnight hour, God will certainly turn it around. If you please enter your PIN followed by the pound or... Thank you. There is one other participant in the conference. Please hello. announce yourself. Hello, 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 hello. I am your host, Sister Vicky. I want to thank all the participants that's going to join me online tonight. And I also want to thank each and every listener that will come across this audio over YouTube. Thank you and God bless you for listening. Amen. Those of you that's not familiar with this line, we want to. I want to let you know that we always start the night off with the Word of God. So if you could turn into your Bibles, Psalms 93, and I'm going to be reading verse 1 through 15. Psalms 90, I'm sorry y'all, Psalms 92. Praise God. Psalms 92, verse 1 through 15. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten string lyre and the melody of the heart. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy. At what your hands have done. How great are your works Lord. How profound your thoughts. Senseless people do not know. Fools do not understand. That though the wicked spring up like grass. And all evildoers flourish. They will be destroyed forever. But you Lord are forever exalted. For surely your enemies, Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured on me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. Thank you, Father God. For the reading of your word. That was Psalms 92. I read the entire Psalms 92. Verse 1 through 15. Like I always say in your in your devotional time with God. Please go back and read through that. And see what God give you out of that. Amen. Praise God. Well tonight we're going to go ahead and get into worship. Praise God. We're going to go ahead and get into worship. And I'm going to sing on tonight. I'm going to sing the victory belongs to Jesus. Amen. I'm going to sing that tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Be with me, Jesus. I'm telling you because the enemy has been trying to attack my voice today. I ought to say I start having symptoms of allergies. But I said, you know what? I'm going to push through this thing because I had already planned what I was gonna go, what I was gonna sing. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna sing tonight because I just was in a singing mood all day today. I ain't the best singer, but I am a worshiper. Amen. I believe in worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Because that's what God honors. Amen. He honors us. He honors the fact that we can worship Him in spirit and in truth, and we can sing from the depths of our soul. Amen. We can sing from the depths of our belly. Amen. Sing glory unto Him. And I'm telling you, I love the Lord with all my strength. I'm telling you, I love Him. I love Him. Because if it wasn't for the Lord that was on my side, where in the world will I be? I tell you why I be in a burning hell without, without I be in a burning hell unsaved. 
that's where I would be if the Lord wasn't on my side. Amen. I thank God for the Lord being on my side. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You can sing with me if you know this song. Amen. Stand against the Lord. No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh.
Don't you know we win as long as we in Christ Jesus? I just feel it down in my belly. That somebody needs to hear that you will win. No matter what you up against. No matter what is coming your way. No matter what you in right now. You will win. Only thing you have to do is stay in Christ. You will win. Amen. You will win. Because the victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. I said the victory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The victory belongs to Jesus. You know what? I just had that song in my spirit all day long today. The victory belongs to Jesus. It's like when you hear worship, it it gets you into a a whole nother element in God. But when you sing it, but when you sing worship, when when it comes out of your mouth, it just just puts you in a whole nother dimension. It puts you... On a whole nother level. Hallelujah. I I just love worship. I tell people I'm not a singer. (laughs) I don't hear every note. Like I should. But one thing I would say about myself. I am a worshiper. Amen. I won't be who I am today if I did not worship. Amen. I love to worship. That's why I can't never finish no song y'all. Anytime I sing. And it's times that I had seen, you know, people have asked me to sing somewhere and I would sing and I would never finish the song. I just cannot finish the song because I'm not a singer. I'm just a worshiper. I can just play tunes and just worship. Amen. That's just who I am. So please, nobody, don't ask me to sing. (laughs) Because I'm telling you, if you ask me to sing, I'm not going to sing the whole song because I'm a worshiper. Amen. I tell you, oh, hallelujah. If you had a week like I had a week. Well, actually, my week won't that bad. But, you know, the Satan always try to steal, kill, and destroy. He always try to get in there some kind of way. Amen. But I just thank God for keeping me this week. I thank God for having his hands not just on me but on my family. I thank God. And, you know, I, I came... To a time where I had to repent this week. You know, I had did something that wasn't pleasing to God. And I had to take time out and I had to repent. I had to ask the Lord for forgiveness. Because when we wrong God in any kind of way, we have to we have to be humble. We have to humble ourselves. Not just, you know, say, God, I'm sorry. But you really have to humble yourself and, and really apologize for wronging God. Amen. And I really had to get into that place, and I had to I had to really ask God for forgiveness, because I can't sit up here and talk to you all, and then I don't have a repentant heart. Because one thing about it, with anybody that that encourage God's people, or if you preach, or if you teach, or if you do anything that God is that the Holy Spirit is leading you to do, if you don't have a repentant heart, if you try to pretend like you got this thing all together, and, and, and um. You, you so uppity and you don't never do nothing wrong, amen. Then you at a you at a dangerous place with God. You is a dangerous place. I can say, God said, admit your faults to one another so that they can pray for you. He wants us to be honest. He, we don't have to always go into details of what that sin is because God look at sin. All sin is equal in his eyes. It don't matter if you curse somebody out or you stole something. It don't matter if you if you uh, uh, um, lied or if you shot somebody. God look at sin all the same. Sin is sin in His eyes. Sin is just sin is just sin, and you have to be able to say, you know what, I sinned against you, God, and I need your forgiveness. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I need prayer. I need prayer because I can humble myself and say. That I wrong God. And I know that God being the God that he is. That he has forgiven me. And he will do the same thing for you. Amen. You don't have to admit your faults to people. Amen. You just admit your faults to God. And you humbly 
you humbly come upon his throne and you let him know what it is that you did wrong because first you have to confess what it was that you did not to people but to god confess it to him you know with a sincere heart now if you know you ain't really sorry for what you have done or what you have said then you really ain't confessing that to god and god's not going to hear you okay but if you sincerely you know have that remorse for wronging god and for doing whatever it is that you have done and you really come to god with a sincere heart he will forgive you that's how faithful he is he's not a man that he shall lie god will forgive you people might not forgive you because people will hold grudges all day long honey and then call themselves a child of god but god would never hold a grudge against you he would do exactly what he says if you apologize to him and you do it with a sincere heart he will forgive you and remember your sin no more and you have to keep going because we're living in a time and day now we got to keep going we can't sit up here and let sin stop us from being who god has called us to be because we sinned you just got to humble yourself. That's why Jesus died on the cross. Not because we... He, he died on the cross for our sins so that we will be able to come to Jesus, come to God with a sincere heart. All because of what Christ has done. We can come to God and sincerely say, in Jesus' name, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for the sin that I have done. And God is just a faithful God. I know, I don't know nobody as faithful as God. I don't know nobody that stick to their word the way that God stick to his. I don't know nobody. Amen. So I'm telling you, please, please do not, do not just live in sin and not be remorseful. Because God, it, it, you know, God mourns over our sin. He don't want us to be stuck in a sinful state if you humble yourself and you turn from that thing amen and you turn from that thing god and you have a desire to turn away you know that you gotta hate that sin just as much as god amen and i'm telling you when you do just that god will forgive you and he will draw you back into his presence he will not leave you he will not drop you like men do men will drop you you do something wrong or you say something they will just drop you just like that at a, at a snap of a finger but god will not do that as long as you do the right thing as long as you come into his presence with the right mindset and a, and a sincere heart he will forgive you don't let nobody tell you that god do not forgive sin forgive you for your sins yes he will because jesus paid the price for that because that price was too much for us. Amen. We couldn't pay it. But Jesus did. And that's why we can come into the God's throne room and ask him for forgiveness for our sins. Amen. God said those that say that they have no sin, that man is a liar. We all have sinned. We all have fallen short of God's glory. We all have done something. We all have said something. We all have thought something. Amen. But the main thing is, if you can come to God with a humble heart and say, God, I wrong you. I wrong you. I did wrong. I knew better, but I did wrong. I allowed the devil to entice me to the degree where I wrong you. And God, I'm asking for your forgiveness because I want to be stronger. And don't just ask God for forgiveness, but ask God for the strength to overcome that sin so if it come against you again that you can overcome it and i said god i need your forgiveness because i want to be a, i want to be an overcomer that's why when 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 i have fallen short of god's glory i always go to him and, and, and with a sincere heart and say god i need I, I need your forgiveness and i always will tell him what it was even though you know even though you know that god knows what you have done but it's something about confessing our sins to god it's something about that you know it does something to us in the process when we can confess our sins because the fleshly part of us do not want to admit when we wrong we don't like to hear when somebody tell us we wrong we don't want we don't like to, we don't like to call out our faults 
But when we can humble ourselves and do that anyway, God honors that. Amen. God honors that. And that wasn't even the message tonight, but I can feel the Holy Spirit saying, you stay right there. Stay right there. And I, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to stay right here. i got to be obedient to the Spirit of God. And I'm going to stay right here on repentance. 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 My brothers and sisters in Christ is so important. Repentance is so, so important. And I'm telling you, it, it, it's a... It is a number one, repentance is the number one thing that we have to do in this in, in this walk with Christ. We have to stay having a repentant heart. And that's why so many backsliders, that's why it's so many backsliders in the world today. Because when they sinned, they didn't immediately turn from that. They kept right on doing it and they kept being, then it turned, then, they, then it became a habitual sin. A habitual sin is when you keep doing it over and over and over again. But if you do something and you realize it, the Holy Spirit convict you on it. Amen. And you realize it was wrong. Go ahead and repent right then. Don't give into it. Don't say, well, hey, you know, I done, I done did it. Now I just will keep right on. No, don't keep right on. Go ahead and repent. For what you have done. Repent for what you have said. Do it right then. Humble yourself right then. Do not wait. Matter of fact, don't even wait an hour later. Don't even wait a minutes later. If you do something, whenever the Holy Spirit convict you. And sometimes, you know, it could be some hours later. I'm going to put it like that. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit are waiting until you get in a, in, in a peaceful state or in a... Uh, you know, he'll wait, he'll, he'll, he'll wait until you get to a state where you can hear him. And, you, and you'll start feeling wrong about what you have done. You know, that thing just don't sit well with you. And you realize you wrong God. And, and that's when you have to come to him. Then, when you realize it was wrong, come to him right then. Don't, don't, don't drag that thought along. Just come to him as soon as you realize that you did wrong. And go ahead and repent for that thing. Because when you do that, then then you, you don't give the enemy no foothold. If you continue with it, when you do wrong and you continue to allow, you know, you continue to, you continue into that sin. And you continue to do that sin again and again and again. You know, they give the devil legal right. To throw things at you. They give the devil legal right to put a stronghold on you. They give the devil legal right. And we have to understand our right in Christ. We have to understand that we have rights. The devil may be the prince of this air. But he but and he might have his rights. But we also have rights as children of God as well. And we have to walk into our authority that Christ has given us. We have to walk into our God-given authority. Because through Christ, we have authority. We, the devil just cannot just triumph over us. We, ha, we, can, we have the power to overcome. Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Spirit. We have the power to overcome all of that wickedness that is thrown at us. Amen. We have the power to triumph over the devil. Amen. God reminds us this in Psalms 91. Amen. That we have the power. To overcome. And that's what we are. Overcomers. Because of what Christ has done. Because he had died on the cross for our sins. That's why we can overcome. Whatever the devil has put. it put upon, Had brought upon us. Amen. But you have to want to overcome. You're not just going to be an overcomer. You have to want to be an overcomer. Alright. You're not just going to walk in your authority. You have to want to walk in your authority. It's about what you want to do. Amen. We all have free will. We all have free will. Even when it comes down to repentance. We all have free will. We all have, have to make a decision if that's what we want to do or not. I hear a lot of people say that they don't serve. They don't want to, you know, get saved. Because God has this high expectation of them. And they feel like they're not going to be able to walk this walk out. So they'd rather not even get saved. 
and you know what that's a lie from the devil that's that's what the enemy is putting in people's minds now in this day and time because they feel like okay if i get saved i'm gonna be considered a hypocrite because i know i don't want to turn from this sin i know i don't want to give up this sin but god wants you to understand god needs you to understand that if you give that that hallelujah i feel the holy spirit hallelujah thank you jesus god wants you to understand that you cannot make yourself better it's through Christ Jesus that's going to make you better. It's through Christ Jesus that's going to make you overcome. It's through Christ Jesus. It's believing in what he has done. It's, in, it's believing in his power, his resurrection power. It's, it's about leaning onto God's word. And, and and allowing God to to penetrate in your mind, to marinate in your heart. It's all about allowing God to do what He needs to do in your life. It's not about what you can do. Hey, Amen. So many people are missing out on on Jesus. So many people are missing out on the Holy Spirit because they so worry about wronging God to the point they act as if, okay, well, it's no need for me to be saved. It's no need for me to get saved because I'm going to do wrong. Don't think like that. Just, you, if, if anything, so the, see, that's the lie of the devil. If anything, you need to say, with, through Christ Jesus, I'm going to do right. <laughs> don't go ahead and speak failure over your life amen because the bible also said that our tongue has power we have the authority to speak those things as if they were and what are you speaking over your life are you speaking defeat are you speaking lack are you speaking disappointments why are you speaking over your life child of god that's what god wants to know what are you speaking over your life because sometimes people are not going to elevate in the Lord because they speak in doubt over themselves. They speak in doubt over their salvation. They are already planning to lose. They are already planning to fail. All because they speak in it. We have to be careful what we speak out of our mouths because our words have power. We have to speak. As if we are, as if we know we have authority, as if we know we are the child of the Most High God. We have to speak this thing. <laughs> and when you begin to speak this thing, you will begin to believe what you're saying. And then you, your actions will be able to make, be in alignment with what you're saying. Stop worrying about if I'm going to get this thing right or not. Stop worrying about if I'm going to be this perfect Christian or not. Stop worrying about that. Just accept Jesus into your life. Accept him into your life. Thirst after righteousness. When you do that, God can do some amazing things in your life, woman and man of God. Woman and men of God. God can do some amazing things. When I first got saved, I, I was like, what in the world is I'm doing? When I first got saved, I'm thinking in my mind, like, what am I doing? I know I'm still going to the club. I know I'm still drinking. I know I'm still fornicating. I know I'm still doing all these things. And I, and I don't have no desire to turn from it. So what am I doing to this altar? And that was that was was in my mind at that time. But I pushed through anyway. I went on and accepted Christ into my life. And as time went on, I, you know, God... God began to, 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 to do something in my life, something amazing in my life. He began to deal with me on so many levels. He began to pull me back from those things that was hurting, that, 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 that was hurting him. He began to draw me into his presence, you know, and, and, and I, and I thank God and I don't regret what I have done accepting him into my life. That was the best thing that I ever done in my whole entire life was to accept Jesus as my personal savior. That's why I get up 12 o'clock midnight and encourage other people. Because this thing ran so deep into me. Because I was on my way to a burning hell. And how Jesus pulled me out of those muddy, mercury waters. And he pulled me into his marvelous light. And he did it so gentle. He was so gentle with me. His gentleness was so 
remarkable. I'm talking about how he did it. I never imagined he would do it the way that he did. And I'm telling you, and as time went on, I, I, I drew more and more in his presence. I, I, I learned more about his character. I start reading the word for myself. Amen. See, when you read the word for yourself, you will begin to see God in a whole nother light. See, some of us are being Christians through the eyes of others. And some of us are being Christians through uh, uh, um, other people's ideas and other people's opinions. But when you begin to read the word for yourself, God can begin to deal with you. Then you have your own identity in Christ. Amen. And that's what God is looking for. People that can humble themselves. Humble themselves and say, you know what, God, I wrong you. You know what, God, I, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I don't have no intentions on doing right. I know that, that, I, that, that, that I have no intentions on... I don't really give you my life, but God, I'm going to trust that you're going to do a good work in me anyway. I'm going to trust that somehow, some way, you're going to draw me closer to you. And God is looking for someone that say, that's going to say, you know what, God, you take the wheel. You take the wheel to my life. You take the wheel because I don't know what to do. When you can admit and say you don't know how to be this perfect Christian, you don't know how to walk in the ways of God. When you can go to God and say, God, I don't know how to do this thing correctly. But God, I need you to show me. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me because I want to get this thing right. I have a humble heart. I want to do what's pleasing in your sight. But God, it's hard. It's hard for me sometimes, God. But God, I'm going to trust that you're going to help me overcome. Just like Jesus ain't overcome when he died on the cross for my sins. Hallelujah. 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 God is looking for some people that will humble themselves. Humble themselves. See, it's, it's something about humbling yourself that, that, that touches God's heart. When you can humble yourself, when you can admit your wrongs, admit your faults to God, and when you can give it over to him, your burdens, if you can just give it to him, stop trying to figure this thing out by yourself. Stop trying to figure this thing out like you got it all together. Stop trying to pretend with God because he already know that you don't, that you messed up. He already know that you can't get this thing off done by yourself. But humble yourself and say, God, I need you. God, I need you. I need help from turning from those things that wrong you. God, I, I want to draw closer to you. God, I, I want to be close to you. I want to have a prayer life, God. But sometimes I feel like I can't even pray. And God, I want to have a prayer life for myself. I don't want to keep have to go to other people and for them to lay hands on me and for them to speak into my life. When God, you have given me the authority to speak into my own life. You have given me the authority to pray over my own situation. But God, I don't feel like I have the strength to do this. God, I need you more than ever. More than I ever needed you before. Because I have a humble heart now, God. I have a humble heart now, God, because I'm thirsting after you, God. I, I, I can literally say now, God, I'm thirsting after you. See, God is looking for some people that is willing to thirst after him. Are you thirsty, men and women of God? Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty for the, for the living water? For the living water that God wants to give to you? Are you thirsty? When you thirsty, God will, will, will fill you. He will fill your desire when you thirsty. When you thirsting after righteousness, he can, he can do amazing things in your life. When you thirsting after righteousness, see, he can separate you from those evil people that is trying to keep you down the wrong path. See, when you thirsting, hallelujah, when you thirsting, God can pull you out of sin. He can pull you out of sin. And you won't even know how you got out of that situation. See, when you're thirsting, God can do some amazing things. He will open them doors that, that, that has been shut for so long. That the devil has shut for so long when you're thirsting. Hallelujah. But you have to thirst after righteousness. You got to want 
Jesus more than anything in this whole entire world. And yes, I mean, you got to want him more than you want your parents. You got to want him more than you want your children. You got to want him more than you want money. You got to want him more than you want fame and fortune. You got to want him more than you want power. Come on, somebody. You got to want him more. And when you, the more you want him, the more he can do in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ha Baba said it is Shada. Thank you, God. There's some people out there that's thirsty. There's some people out there that is thirsty after righteousness. Hallelujah. There are some people out there. The devil try to make it seem that ain't no true people out there no more. It ain't no people out there that's really living for God no more. It ain't nobody out there that's real no more. See, the devil is implanting this in the world. And the world is beginning to believe this nonsense. That's why they call us fake. That's why they don't, they call us hypocrites. That's why they call us, soon we make one wrong move, oh, we ain't really real. Soon we make, soon we say one wrong thing, oh, you fake. That's what, the, that's what the devil is putting into the world and the world is believing it. But God said we're not of the world. God said that you're not of the world, child of God. I'm talking to you. You that have the humble heart. You are not of the world. Amen. Amen. God said you are in the world, but you're not of it. That's why people don't understand you. That's why you don't fit in everywhere you go. That's why. Because you're not of the world. You're just in it. You're passing by. One of these days, you're going to meet your Savior. One of these, oh, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Spirit right there. One of these days, all of this going to pay off. One of these days, this humbleness is going to pay off. One of these days, you thirsting after righteousness is going to pay off. One of these days. It's going to pay off. And when it pay off, it's going to be a marvelous day. It's going to be a marvelous day that never happened uh, uh, in your life ever. The day that Jesus Christ returned for his church. And you're going to be gone with him. You're going to be taken in the cloud with him. That's going to be the best day of your whole entire being. Your whole entire being. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for his hands being on my life. I thank God for his hands being on my friends and family lives. I thank God for being, I love to hear testimonies. I love to hear testimonies. Because when you hear testimonies, that lets you know that you're next. That lets you know that that, that God is able in your life. I love to hear stories of miracles signs and wonders because that lets me know that i can that, that god would do a miracle in my life that lets me know i love to hear when people that they have backslid and come back to christ because that lets me know that if i ever backslide i have the opportunity to come back to come back to christ you have to love the gospel of jesus christ you have to thirst after righteousness I don't know, but the Holy Spirit is staying right there. Thirst after righteousness. Some people, somebody needs to hear it. And it may not be you. That it may not be whoever that's on line with me live right now. It could be somebody that's going to come across this audio over YouTube. You need to thirst after righteousness. Thirst after righteousness like never before. We are living in the end times. As I was sitting in my favorite chair in my home the holy spirit letting me know we are living in the end times these times are wicked these times are are are, are deceitful these these are the terrible times right here we're living in the end times right now i know y'all heard grandma and them talk about it because i don't hear plenty of people say well you know what my grandma dead and gone i remember she used to say that we live in the end times and christ coming back and he ain't came back all this time but baby don't be fooled don't be fooled see god don't look at time the way that we look at time god knows when jesus is going when he's going to send jesus to come back for his church god already had that pacific date and time 
But see, God is showing us, it's like a movie. God is showing us clips after clips after clips. And eventually, eventually the time will come. The Bible said that God, that Jesus will come back like a thief in the night. No man knows the hour. We're not going to know exactly when he's coming back. But what we do know is he's coming back. And he's coming back for a church. He's coming back for a real church. He ain't coming back for no fake church. He's not coming back for no for no church that's trying to <clears throat> that's trying to uh, cast cast people away. He's coming back for a church that allow the Holy Spirit to move. That allow the lost to get set free. He's coming back for a church that allow the sick to be healed. To allow the oppressed to be delivered. He's coming back for a church that did his will. He's coming back for a church. Hallelujah. That is gonna that has been doing his will. And been doing his will. Humbling themselves. While doing his will. Even though you messed up. You could come back and say. God I messed up. I gotta pick back up where I left off. And God's gonna take you right in. Because you humble yourself. And he will not remember what you have done. Don't keep holding on to what you have done. Let it go. Let it go. And move forward. Because if God has forgiven you of your sins, then you need to forgive yourself of your sins. Don't stay right there. See, the devil wants you to feel guilty. The devil wants you to feel down. The devil wants you to feel like, okay, you done messed up, so you need to go back into the world. No. No, humble yourself and say, God, I need your help. If you need help from God, ask him. God said you have not because you ask not. You got to ask God for what you want. Don't just sit there and think that, he, that it's just going to be just dropped right in your lap. You got to ask him. If it's wisdom that you need, if it's discernment that you need, if it's strength that you need, whatever it is that you need from God. Ask and you shall receive. But God said my people are not asking me. My people are getting to a place they're not asking me for anything. They are asking man for stuff. But they won't ask me. Why you, Why don't you ask God? Why don't you ask God? Why don't you ask him? You asking everybody else. But you don't ask God. And God said, why are my people not asking me? I'm right here. I'm willing. I'm willing. But they're not asking me. And they don't have what they need because they're not asking for what they need. They're not asking. And it's time now to ask God for the things that you need to live this life effectively. To do the will of the Father. Now is the time. To ask so you can receive. God is willing to give you. What you ask him for. But you have to be willing to ask. I'm telling you. So many people. Are drawing further and further away. From the gospel of Jesus Christ. So many people are gravitating to the gospel of this world. And they missing out on the true glory of God. They missing out on their healing. They missing out on their deliverance. They missing out on God's blessing. Because there's so many people are gravitating to this world. To the, to the doctrines of men. To the doctrines of demons. But they not gravitating to the word of God. The word of God is what's going to help you sustain in these last and evil days. It's going to be so easy for people to be fooled in these last days because they don't have the word of God in them. You have to meditate on the word of God. It's okay to listen to T.D. Jays if that's who you like. If he motivates you, that's okay. Amen. God wants you to listen to people that's motivating you to do better. But at the same time, you can't neglect his word. You got to read his word because when you read a word, it does something to your spirit. It does something in the unseen realm. Amen. Come on, somebody. It does something in the unseen realm. 
when you read the word for yourself and the devil want to make you seem want to make you feel like it's not doing nothing when you read the word it's not it's not being effective it's not going to do nothing in your life but the devil is a liar and god said the truth ain't in him I'm here to expose the devil. I'm here to tell you. God has sent me a servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He has sent me to warn his people. To let his people know the truth. The truth is when you read the word, something happens immediately. When you read the word, something is happening in the unseen realm. Something that you cannot see with your physical eyes. Amen. It's effective. I feel the Holy Spirit right there. It's effective. God's word is effective. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. All thing you got to do is pick it up. All thing you got to do is pick it up. Pick that word up. Pick it up. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, how about shit that it is shot down? Oh, how about I said that it is shot down? And I said it. Thank you, Father God. Your will be done, Father. Your will be done, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I want to go ahead and read a scripture tonight. I feel like the Holy Spirit has spoken on tonight. I feel that in my spirit. I feel like God said, this is it. This this was the message for tonight. Because I had something else planned. Amen. But God said, that can wait. That's a good message, but that can wait. But I, I, I needed you to say this tonight. I needed you to say this tonight. I needed you to stay right here tonight because somebody needs to hear this tonight. Somebody needed to hear this right here tonight. Somebody needs to hear this. And amen, amen. And I, and I have to be obedient to what God said because God said obedience is better than sacrifice. So I have to be obedient to what the, what the Holy Spirit is leading me to do. Amen. His way is better. I might head away, but his way is better. Amen. And, and, and if you didn't grab the, any of you that may have just joined the line here live with me, if you didn't get the whole message, please, when this video uploads over YouTube, please, please, please go back and listen to the entire message. Because God's letting me know this message is for you. Amen. This message is for you to hear. Amen. Amen. I thank you, Father God. I'm going to go ahead and get to a scripture. Amen. I had one scripture for, matter of fact, I'm going to read the scripture that I had for tonight. I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm turning to it in my Bible right now. And I'm reading out the, um, the NIV version. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. One thing about it, we got to be patient in the Lord. Amen. We got to be patient. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord. I'm getting to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. Amen. Why? And I can't get to it. Oh, here you go. Right here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. On time, God. Ephesians chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading um, set verse 17. I keep asking. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo, Lord. This is right on point. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read it again. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I keep asking the 
the god i keep asking that god of our lord jesus christ the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better hallelujah i pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe the power is the same as the mighty strength he exert when he raised christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority power and dominion and every name that invoke not only in the present age but also in the one to come hallelujah i want to read keep right on reading but i'm gonna stop right there that was ephesians and i started at that was ephesians chapter one i started at verse 17 and i read all the way to um 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 verse 21 so i started from verse 17 read all the way to verse 21 please 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 and your devotional time with god you read that you you that's listening to me right now you read it you take time out and read it and 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 watch god give you a revelation out of it god is going to enlighten you god is going to open up your eye your spiritual eyes he's gonna he's gonna place something inside of you you go back and you read it god is gonna do something within your spirit amen you read that for yourself i always tell people all the time it's okay to hear me read but you read you read you go back and you read you read it for yourself amen because what god may give me out of it it may be something different for you amen because god is a god that can do all things his ways is not our ways that's what his word said the way he do things is not how we do things amen the way he allowed me to see things it may be it may he may give you a, a, a another way of seeing things amen but it's gonna be all for his glory amen 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 well i'm gonna stop right there for tonight because it's already getting close to one o'clock but um i want to go ahead real quick and give you the announcements i want to let you know that july the 31st july the 31st is push night so those of you that's not familiar with push night we be live on facebook and we be live on the phone lines and we normally pray and worship for an hour we pray and we worship we pretty much do what we do here but uh we just stay consistent with it we 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 just let the holy spirit have his way but the only difference is we just live on facebook so if you haven't subscribed to facebook please do so uh i mean um if you haven't subscribed to youtube please go ahead hit that subscribe button hit that um note um that bell notification bell so you won't miss any recent uploads and please go ahead and um follow and like watch out podcast over face facebook so that when we go live you can be a part of that amen and uh please those of you that that loves to read scriptures um i place scriptures on my other social media platforms um go ahead and and follow like um watch out podcast over um twitter over instagram and over um tiktok so i do use those platforms just for scriptures amen so those of you that that loves to read scriptures please 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 um follow those platforms i'm pretty watch out podcast is pretty new over tiktok but please 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 be a part of that if you able to amen and um please tell a friend tell somebody about jesus and tell somebody about this line because this line is a blessing i'm telling you anytime we can get together 12 o'clock midnight and worship god this time of night come on somebody 
that there's power in that there's power in that amen it's power in unity anyway amen because the bible said one can chase a thousand and two ten thousand come on somebody imagine three and, and beyond i mean uh three and above all of that amen but you know um what else what else i got for um um for um announcements uh oh prayer requests um i am uh, watch out podcast is connected to what's out prayer request number is one two five two three eight two five seven five one um people can call text or either call that number locally if you local or if you anywhere in the u.s um rates may apply depends on where you calling from um and and it's also connected to WhatsApp for those of you that are calling that may be a part of Watch Out Podcast that is from um another country like Africa or Jamaica, like Brother Troy and Brother Joshua there. Um please, please pray, pray, continue to pray. But we're gonna go ahead and end the night with prayer. Amen. First of all, I want you to touch and agree with me because Brother Troy um is is not able to make it online tonight he has had death in his family and we're praying right now we're gonna pray for brother troy amen and before we go into that is there anybody online that need prayer for anything amen if you need prayer for anything you don't have to say your name if you don't want to or you can just say your first or your last name and just say what it or or you if you don't want to go into details with what it is that you need prayer for if you just need prayer, you can speak now. If you online right now, if you online and you need prayer for anything, Amen. Go ahead and speak now because we want to make sure that that you know we want to make sure that the people needs are being met here as as they call in, Amen. So if you need prayer for anything, speak now, Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and pray for Brother Troy. And I need you, those of you that's online tonight and may be muted, um, please touch and agree with me. Those of you that's coming across this audio over YouTube, please listen or touch and agree with me at this moment. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you right now for this gathering on tonight, God. We pray that your will has been accomplished and has been sustained in our lives. Father God, we thank you for Brother Troy. Who, who became a partaker of Watch Out Podcast and a partaker of encouraging your people. And he's going through a situation right now, Father God. Only you know, Father God. And God, we're asking, oh God, that you to heal his broken heart oh god we ask oh god that you will watch over his family father god in this time of grief oh father we know that he had lost a family member father and god we're asking you oh god to to mend broken hearts oh god oh god we're asking you to restore peace oh god in the midst of their situations right now father we ask for your hands to be upon brothers toy life right now father we thank you for what you have already done father and we thank you for what you're gonna do father because eyes haven't heard eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard all the things that you have planned for your people oh god and all the things you have planned for brother Troy in his life father god touch his family father god may you may you mend their broken hearts at this time god oh god may they come together in unity oh god oh god right now in the name in the name of jesus christ our lord and savior we say thank you father thank you right now in jesus name father god we want to say thank you for this visitation on tonight god i thank you for using me effectively lord god for to encourage your people god i don't take it lightly lord god and god i say i thank you god i ask you to cover every listener i ask you to cover every participant is online tonight god i ask you to move in us like never before oh god oh god give us a word oh god in, in your living word oh god that's gonna draw us closer to you oh god oh god i pray god that each and every individual will have a repentant heart oh 
oh God, that they may humble themselves when they do wrong, oh God, and get back in alignment with your will, oh God. God, I thank you, oh God, for your forgiving, for your mercy, for your grace. I thank you, God, for shielding us. I thank you, God, for protecting us, oh God. Not allowing the devil to triumph over us, oh God, but giving us another day, God, to get it right with you. Father God, we say we thank you. We thank you for everything that you have already done. We thank you for what you're doing now. We thank you for what you're going to do, God. Because you got so much amazing things planned for those that's genuinely seeking you. For those that have a humble heart and say, I'm sorry. You got so much in store for us, oh God. And we say, thank you, Father, for not taking your hands off of us. Thank you, Father, for giving us exactly what we need. Giving us our daily bread. God, we're praying for the sick to be healed. Oh God, we're praying for the oppressed to be delivered. We praying, oh God, for those that are unsaved, may they become saved, Father. We're praying all over the world for people that are living in famine. We praying for a miracle, Father. Because you is a miracle working God. And God, you said we have not because we ask. We doesn't. We don't ask. And that's why we don't have. And God, we're asking for miracle signs and wonders to be upon the earth. We're asking for miracle signs and wonders to hit our homes. We're asking for miracle signs and wonders to hit our families. We are asking you on tonight, God, to do a new thing in our lives, oh Father. And God, I said I thank you. We thank you on tonight, God. And God, we give you the glory and we give you the honor and we give you the praise. And we say thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And, and um, I want to, my closing remark for tonight is please take in everything that has been said on tonight. Because I know that, you know, when I upload these videos, sometimes I have to, when I go back and I, I at least listen to the videos, the audios at least once. I at least listen at least once. And, um, and I, and, and I can feel the spirit of the Lord, you know, showing me something. Even if it's me just talking, you know, the Lord will show me me. You know, it's time for us to stop pointing fingers at other people and start looking at our own self. You know, we got to, we got to, we have to work this salvation out with fear and trembling. You know, we, God is, God don't want us, because when you point at somebody, guess what? Them three fingers are pointing back at you. While that thumb is pointing up, and that pointing finger is pointing to somebody else, them three fingers is pointing back at you. And that means we got to check ourselves. We got to check, we have to check ourselves. We have to stop checking other people all the time and start checking ourselves. And we have to start humbling ourselves. You know, this walk don't have nothing to do with nobody else. This walk is an individual walk. And what you do for yourself matters. And you have to take your, your life seriously. And you have to, you have to really, really come into grips with your relationship with God because I'm telling you, these days are evil. These are evil days. In, I mean, the, the 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 it's so easy to be fooled. That's why we got to stay into that word, and we got to read the word for ourselves. You know, it's some it's good to listen to pastors and stuff, and them read the word. But you got and and, and ministers and teachers and stuff. But you got to read this thing for yourself. This word does something when you read it for yourself. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to start reading the word. And I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to myself as well. God wants us. That's why I say us to read the word. And want us to read the word as often as necessary. You can't never read the word of God too much. You can never. If you ever say I'm reading the word of God a little bit too much. Then <laughs> you need to get your. You, you, need to, you need to check. You need to check yourself. Hey man, you need to check yourself or somebody else check you. Because there's no way you can read God's word too much. Hey Amen. If you read his word too much, then you on a you on a, a, a good path. You on a good path. Hey Amen. I want to just say thank you all for participating in, in this uh, watch night. And um please tell somebody. Tell somebody so they can tell somebody so we can all come together. For encouragement, for prayer, for worship. 
and and spread the gospel because that's what god has called us to do to spread the gospel so with that being said is anybody online tonight that would like to say anything before we hang up amen amen so with that being said i want to say thank you and god bless you and you have a wonderful wonderful night well morning and have a wonderful wonderful weekend and a wonderful weekday and guess what god's willing we be back here again next weekend with another move of god but this time next time we'll be live on facebook so all you facebookers if you can join join watch our podcast live 12 o'clock midnight um eastern time zone usa and um let's do let's do it let's do it let's make it happen in jesus name so y'all have a wonderful night in jesus name good night